Good morning, all. Your finger is the key. Hmm, what does that mean? And here we've got a little icon of a padlock and that swirly pattern, well, it's a fingerprint because this is a fingerprint padlock. Interesting, how's this gonna work? Now, before going any further, I should say that this device has been very kindly supplied by banggood.com. Thank you very much, Banggood. And there will be a link of some sort in the description below so that you can go and have a look at this on Banggood's website. Right, so now we need to do a little bit of therapeutic unboxing. Thank you for purchasing fingerprint padlock. Ooh, look, fingerprint padlock. Um, now on the back it says that it is a model so-and-so, it's a silver one, zinc alloy, 65 grams, it's got a battery, 260 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts, it's waterproof to IP65, those are the dimensions. Now also in here is uh, USB to, well that looks like USB-C, yeah pretty sure that's USB-C, and there is a 5 volt port here, 5 volts in, there's also a set button here. And this is, oh, that's come on. This is where you start to think, how is this going to work? I mean, okay, it reads my fingerprint, stores it, my fingerprint then un unlocks it, but how do you set it? And what opportunities are there for unlocking this thing um, using, I don't know, some process, like perhaps you put five volt power onto it and press the button or press and hold it or something. In other words, how secure is it? And uh, even before reading the manual, I'm kind of playing with it, pressing it, blue light. Does that release either of these two things? Doesn't seem to. Then it beeps four times and the red light comes on, which I presume means it's locked. Yeah, I can't quite work out how that comes apart. I mean, obviously I will read the manual, but if I was designing this, how would I design it? How does I, would I design it in such a way that once locked, it couldn't be unlocked any other way than with the fingerprint. But what happens if the fingerprint stops working? What mechanism would you put in place to override or open the thing up or, or record a new fingerprint? I just can't think how I'd do it. It's, it's intriguing, it's, it's got me baffled. Well, how about making it so complicated that you can never actually remember how to operate it? Okay, I'm being a, being a bit facetious here, but um, yeah, so I've got to go through all this now, haven't I? Check the empty status. I haven't actually managed to get this thing to come out yet. Uh, empty status, blue light on, uh, non-empty status, it will alternately flash blue and red. Well, I'm getting the empty status. Where am I? Blue light on, I was getting that. Now I'm not. Now there is a reset procedure and it says if you want to set a new administrator account or delete accounts, there are administrator accounts and user accounts, uh, please reset the fingerprint padlock firstly, then set new accounts. But I mean, what's to stop you just in the field coming across one of these things, entering this reset procedure and then just setting yourself up as the administrator? Well, it looks like in order to reset the unit, you actually have to provide the administrator's fingerprint to reset the unit so maybe that protects against someone just starting this thing from scratch but i mean at the moment it's in a sort of empty status if i press that button i just get that blue light so how many different statuses are there how many different modes are there and what happens if it just stops understanding or reading the administrator's fingerprint you know maybe you burn your finger or something and it just won't read it how do you get round that? This is still intriguing me. Right, well, I suppose I should go through this. You check the empty status by pressing the button. You should get a blue light, that's fine. Uh, then you set the administrator account. You press the button once, you get the blue light. Uh, place the administrator finger 10 times. Right, okay. One, two, three, doesn't seem to be registering all these. It's registering some of them. Maybe I'm not quite putting my finger in the right place. 
I've got to remember which finger as well. It's index finger. Oh, I've got a long beep. I think I've set the administrator account. Right, let's try it. You just put your finger on it. Double beep blue. Oh, it pulls out. That's pretty amazing. Now, um, how does the release mechanism work? Well, um, I think you can hear it. When I put this pin back in, you can hear a motor. And I'm going to put this up to the microphone of the camera so that you can hear it. Let's put the pin mechanism back in with it touching the camera. Uh, no, that hasn't gone in. Did you hear that? Did you hear the motorized motor? So it seems that um, it's fully functional with just the administrator account. You don't need user accounts. Um, so you just touch it. Okay, sometimes it won't read. <laughs> oh dear, well, this is what I was worried about. See, ah, blue. Pull it out and that's it. It's a padlock that reads your fingerprint. It's marvelous. Put the pin back in and a little motor runs. Um, and locks it up again and that does seem quite well locked. Now what about resetting it? Press and hold. Wait for it to flash which it is flashing but then you have to show it the administrator's finger. You get a long beep on the uh, LED. I think that's correct. And now it should have totally forgotten about me and everyone else. And if I press it, it's in the empty status. Yep, just blue. It doesn't release. So would that deter a thief? The thief can't actually open it um, because he couldn't have done that administrator reset. So I can now uh, become the administrator again by putting my finger on there 10 times, but I couldn't have got past that previous stage. So that's how they prevent anyone just hacking this device. Is that good enough? So now I'm going to set the administrator account, press the button, it's in empty, do the 10 times thing. So it seems that this padlock, okay, it's taking them gradually, um, will only open if it knows about an administrator, it has administrator fingerprint details in there, um, that's the only time it will open. It will not open in the empty status. It will not open when charging, I presume. Okay, so it now knows about me. I am the administrator. I can now... That didn't work. I can now unlock the padlock. I suppose that's the only way it could be done, really. Now, faced with this and knowing it's a fingerprint reader and you're a malicious person, what would you do? Well, you'd obviously just press and hold the set button, wouldn't you, in the hope that it would reset the unit. So flashing red, it now needs the finger, the administrator's fingerprint to do a reset. What if it doesn't get the administrator's fingerprint? Let's try my middle finger. So that's failed. Two sets of double beeps. Let's check the status. Uh, nothing. Oh, flashing alternately red and blue. What did that one mean? Oh, that's the non-empty status. Well, then it should still be capable of responding to my fingerprint. Yes, it is. I heard the motor go. It opens. So, yeah, uh, a malicious person can't really disrupt the day-to-day -day operation of this thing too badly. Right, let's unlock it. Just put my finger on it. Double beep. Unlocks. Nice and easy. Um, that narrow part on the pin, let's get in a little bit closer. Yes, I mean, it's not very thick uh, metal there. It's probably about one and a half millimetres at the narrowest point. How easy would it be able to break that by just yanking this sharply downwards? Um, I mean, with any padlock of this sort of dimension, it's more of a deterrent, really. It's not going to be um, high security, let's face it. Right, what about false positives? Let's try my thumb. No, it doesn't like that. Middle finger. No, ring finger. Little finger. No, it's not having it. Index finger on my left hand. It's not having it. Index finger on my right hand. <laughs> it's not having that either. 
Try again. And there we go. Okay, so it doesn't seem to false positive. Um, other thoughts? No, it didn't like that. Um, what's that crimping like? Let's get in on that. The crimping of the um, steel twisted cable into that hexagonal sort of crimped end. How tight is that going to be? What are the tolerances on that? Could some of those be looser than others? It's just hard to say. That's not really an electronic thing. That's a mechanical thing. You can just get a gut feeling of, about how secure that is, can't you? Now, look at how in different lighting conditions the thing appears to be a different colour. This one looks almost gold-like. Oh, okay, I'm messing about. They sent me two. And there's a good reason for that because, well, I'm just putting off the inevitable really, aren't I? We're going to have to smash one of these, aren't we? Actually, I've just discovered that in unprogrammed mode, I think if I press that it should tell me that it's unprogrammed. Yeah, single blue LED. Um, you just put your finger on it and it just opens. It doesn't really care in unprogrammed mode who you are. It just works, which I suppose makes sense. Now, I don't know whether you can see this, but it looks to me like the back is a separate piece. I can see a little line running down there. I've tried sort of gingerly twisting a screwdriver in there, but there is no movement. I think this padlock um, would probably draw less attention to itself than the gold one. So I think the gold one is coming apart. And although I don't really want to do this, I'm going to have to use the mole grips of extended knowledge to do this. Okay, children, look away now, because this could get ugly. Oh, the back's come off. Not too bad. Right, that's half off. Um, but I've just noticed, actually, that the uh, rear piece is uh, held on partly with a, a screw. And it's actually this thing. This thing is acting as a screw. So I started trying to undo this and uh, yes, it unscrews, which is kind of a weak point, isn't it? Really? <laughs> because if you can unscrew that and there's a washer and thread, well, then you've kind of defeated the lock really, haven't you? And then that comes off. However, we can now see inside. Right, let's see what we have inside. Well, we have um, a 260 milliamp hour lithium ion or lithium polymer uh, pouch cell there, single cell, presumably. And we have a motor. Now, just in here, there's a tiny little printed circuit board. It's very thin, but it has a switch on it. And that switch is pressed when you put the little pin in. So let's try that. As I push the pin in and it presses that switch, you can see that the motor turns and there's a little grabber arm which has now grabbed the pin and that won't come out. And if I, this is in empty mode, so if I use any finger, the motor swings that arm away and I can pull the pin out. So I mean, it's pretty straightforward really. That arm does look like it's made of metal, um, sort of, um, toothed into a plastic um, axle or, or thing coming out of the motor. There must be a gearbox in there as well because this thing moves relatively slowly. So yeah, the pin goes in the hole, presses the tactile switch and the motor arm just comes around and retains it. It's that simple. Now I've just noticed that if I bend that at an angle, I can just pull it out. Um, However, I can't do that on this one, and so I think what's stopping it is that there's a sort of fairly deep moulding on there, which stops when this lid is on, it stops you doing that, just pushing that away from the little retaining um, semicircular grabber thing there. So I don't think that's an issue when the back is in place. This isn't going to go back on terribly well now, because I kind of bent it, because I didn't realise that the... Um, steel cable was screwed into that fairly substantial p 
pillar thing there. Right, let's look a little further into this thing. Um, the lipo is coming out. Oh yeah, that's coming out. Oh, there's a big chip in there. And a slightly smaller chip. Oh, that's a lot of electronics. Well, now the main chip is a biosec. So is that biosecurity? Um, it looks like it's a TA0702 or possibly IA0702. I think it's TA0702. So yeah, biosec uh, chip. Now, what's the little chip next to it with the 10 pins? Is that a memory? Because this thing does have the administrator account. And bear in mind that the data is probably a whole load of sort of um, points on, on your fingerprint. So they're probably quite large data files. Well, a K or so maybe each. And you've got the administrator account and all the user accounts. So yeah, possibly that's an external memory. Uh, USB-C connector there. There's some gunk around the connector for the LiPo. Um, there's a little five pin... Where is it? I think it's down there. If I tip this up, a little six pin SOT23 device that's probably related to power. So, yeah, that's probably how it works. And then on the back of the board, which is held in with four screws, I suppose I should take it out, is actually the fingerprint sensor. So, just pull these little screws out with a magnetized screwdriver. Uh, one more in there. I've got to be slightly aware that this. Uh, circuit board is live, live in the sense that it's got um, 3.7 volts on it. Okay, can I lift that out? Right, here it is, all out of its uh, little box. Now, if I um, press this switch, which simulates the uh, the plunger being pushed back in, you can see that the motor moves to its locked position. This is not programmed, so any fingerprint will do. So I put my finger on there. It beeps and the motor moves to the unlocked position. So lock it up again by pushing that uh, cable in. Presses that little tactile switch and it locks. That's how it works. And uh, here's a little close up of the circuit board with the surround removed from the uh, fingerprint sensor. Put my any fingerprint on there and the motor opens up. Whoops. Press the button, the motor locks, fingerprint detect, oh something's gone wrong, why is that not detecting, I'm probably shorting something, and there it is. Now just a thought about the obvious weak point of this which is that we now know that this is screwed and loctited into um, what is effectively a nut which is there, quite a substantial one. But if you started to turn this to unscrew it, you'd have to ensure that this whole thing rotated in on itself. Can you make that happen? Can you make this whole thing rotate as you turn it? Probably. So does that mean that this has a fatal flaw, which is that you can just simply unscrew the... Uh, steel cable from the side of the lock you decide so there it is a high technology solution to an age-old problem how do you keep your belongings safe fingerprint reader turns the little key uh, button there press it and the little key locks again is this really necessary would a key in a mechanical padlock be as good. Just got to ask yourself that question, haven't you? Cheerio.